In this video, we're going to talk about what JavaScript is and what it does, including some examples. So first, we'll answer the question, what is JavaScript? Let's get one thing out of the way immediately. JavaScript is not Java. It has nothing to do with Java. The fact that they're both popular languages with similar names is unfortunate because they really have nothing to do with one another. But like Java, JavaScript is a programming language and probably one of the most popular and widely used in the world right now. So what does JavaScript do? Well, as I said, JavaScript is a programming language. And so what that effectively means is that it allows you to program, or you could think of it as bossing around, the web. You can use it either to program web browsers. You can even use it to program servers. In this course, we'll be looking at examples and mostly talking about things that are client-side only. But as far as the language itself, everything you learn about JavaScript in this course would be applicable to programming a web browser or to working with technologies like Node or other server-side JavaScript environments. JavaScript creates interactivity. So what that means is that it allows things in the browser which were previously, in the early days of the web, generally static. That is, your page would download, it would load some images, and really the only movement or changes that you might see would be in the form of animated GIFs or something along those lines. But JavaScript lets you create very rich interactivity. These days, JavaScript is taking over for areas of interactivity that maybe five or six years ago were entirely done with Flash. But JavaScript has the advantage of working on many modern mobile devices. So if you're looking at a website on a phone or other kind of mobile computing platform and you see interactivity where things are moving around or there are visual effects, things like that, if it's working on that device, odds are it's being created via JavaScript. And if you really want to see some of the things that JavaScript does, try disabling JavaScript in your browser at some point and browsing the web and watch what happens. A lot of things kind of disappear or break, or if they work, they work in different ways. Ideally, websites would be built so that JavaScript is not required because there are a lot of environments where it does not work. That's a technique that we call progressive enhancement. But you will certainly see on a lot of modern websites things that just absolutely do not work and are completely inaccessible with JavaScript turned off. So let's take a look at a few examples. So here we are on video to brains English Twitter page. JavaScript is all over the place on Twitter. We have some simple things like being able to expand a tweet like this to see retweets. That's done in JavaScript. This sign in box is disclosed using JavaScript. If we scroll down the page a little ways, get to a certain point, and more tweets load automatically, that's also done using JavaScript. And things like this, where we can expand a tweet and even pull in a photo. So clearly, it's everywhere here. Likewise, on the Video to Brain homepage, this slideshow, which we can cycle through, have a nice little visual sliding effect. This is also done using JavaScript. So let's disable JavaScript and take a look at this page again. Now if I reload, videotobrain.com even warns me that JavaScript is not active and that I might see some weird behaviors as a result. This website is actually pretty accessible even with JavaScript disabled, although the slideshow does nothing anymore. I can click to my heart's content and nothing will happen. But this button still works. But if I switch back to Twitter and reload with JavaScript disabled, now tweet expansion doesn't work. I can't get to the sign in box. I still have a sign up box over here. And various other components still work. But this infinite scroller will stay here and spin forever. There are other examples of JavaScript all over the web. There is actually a web game called Cut the Rope, which is based on an iOS game that is for iPhones and iPads. And it's done entirely in JavaScript, not a lick of Flash involved. It's very impressive. And popular map sites like Bing Maps and Google Maps, those are also built using JavaScript and other technologies, but no Flash. So JavaScript is all over the web. It's being used very extensively, and it's definitely a skill worth learning. Some of the very advanced examples like games and these map sites take some pretty serious programming chops. And we're certainly not going to get you that far in this course. But 
you'll be well on your way to being able to read and understand and write your own JavaScript, and you'll be getting started on the road to becoming a real JavaScript programmer.